Hi, my name is Megan Atovle and I am here to talk about design fiction. Uh, about a year ago, there was an ad that came out that turned out to be a hoax from Funny or Die for a hoverboard. And I cried when I found out that it wasn't real. And that kind of got me thinking about how art informs science. Um, basically, you can make people believe that something's real, even if it isn't, based on whether or not they want it to be real and how compelling your story is. Uh, and there's been a lot of examples lately of really bad design fiction. So firstly, um, design fiction is different than concept art. Concept art takes something that can actually happen and basically puts it into a framework that people understand why it's different than what actually exists right now. Uh, with design fiction, what you end up doing is something more like it's closer to science fiction where you're actually showing people something that doesn't exist yet but could exist in the future and you're focusing on how it's going to change people's behavior. So things like holograms and stuff are starting to become possible and you can show people how they're going to change things. You can also uh, use it in technology. If you're making some new product like a 3D printer that doesn't exist yet, people know what that is but they don't necessarily know how new materials or new technology is going to change the way people use that stuff. So there's a, there's a really cool, creepy um, film called Sight. If you haven't seen it, you should go check it out. And it gives you an idea of what it would look like if you had contact lenses that superimposed augmented reality. There's materials coming out now that can actually do that. But you can't teach people about that by just showing them the materials. So you need to make stories that show how your behavior will change in day-to-day -day life. Good design fiction shows how something new is going to change things, like drones delivering you packages is going to be a little bit of a different experience. Jibo does a really good job of this. Jibo is a ro robot that assists with day-to-day uh, -day life. It replaces things like the phone um, by taking pictures for you. So it actually does facial tracking and it can like take pictures of you as you're walking around the room. In their concept video, they don't actually mention Jibo replacing your phone. They just imply it in the way that the story is told. So there's a woman that's talking to somebody that's, or there's a robot that's talking to somebody that's making uh, something in the kitchen, and it basically conveys information from her phone. Uh, Se Secret is like an example of super bad design fiction. It's also a really good example of how people can be. Um, gullible enough to fund something that's a super bad idea or something that isn't possible. So what's wrong with this picture is that projectors can't project black. Like they're light. Light doesn't work that way. Um, so, so people still funded this. It was like six, $600,000 or something that they raised uh, based on this video that was badly composited and basically solved the problem of somebody using an awkward one finger touch screen that can't actually happen in the bathtub on their hairless skin on a light surface. So that's not really a problem, right? Um, but they still raised a bunch of money, so it still sort of begs the question how, like, art inspires us. And we've seen this technology in, like, science fiction, in cartoons. People really, really want it, whether they actually need it or not. So as responsible designers, we need to think about that when we're creating a story. Another really big problem in design fiction is the point of view. So um, what's sort of questionable about this is in augmented and virtual reality, this is not what you would see. That guy in the head, like wearing the headphones or wearing the headset, that's what he'd actually look like. Really awkward. He can't see around him. He can't see the actual world. Um, there are augmented reality applications, uh, things like um, things like the the meta that can superimpose onto the real world. But when you upsell things, this is a time machine. Um, Carl Sagan is sitting in it. When you upsell things, basically you're selling snake oil. Like you're creating something, an experience that can't actually be replicated. So in order to do compelling, realistic design fiction, you should be focusing on the product and not actually, or sorry, you should be focusing on the experience and not actually the product. This is a laser tag ad. That is not what it's like to play laser tag. <laughs> So, I mean, when you're selling an experience, focus on what the experience actually looks like and what you're actually experiencing. This is a lot more accurate. Uh, you can go into a laser tag arena and they haze the air and you can actually see the lasers. It's pretty cool. You don't need to add like lightning bolts and weird sailor hats. You can totally sell an experience that's realistic by focusing on what's actually possible. And you know that you've done it right. Jibo has done it right. Because what's going to happen is people are going to end up not using their phones for things. And they've already told that in the story without actually saying, this robot will replace your phone. 
So good design fiction conveys a vision, but doesn't try to convince you the product exists. If it tries to convince you the product exists, it's snake oil. Um, by the way, that hoverboard actually does exist, but it only works on metal plates, and I think a lot less people would have been angry if they would have just come out and said that. Thanks. Thanks.